greetings. I didn't see you there. Welcome to the uh, Monday Morning uh, Vodcast podcast. I don't own a Pog collection. Good morning, all you Billy Bumblers. I like to chase my water with a little bit of fireball. Mm-mm. Nothing says loving like fireball in the morning. I don't normally have fireball in the morning, just so you guys don't worry about me. You know what sucks? You want to? I'm going to tell you what sucks. I don't care if you want to know it or not. It probably won't bum your day out. Bummed my day out, though. I already filmed this once today. <laughs> second time here we go the problem is is uh, sometimes all right so every other sunday or every third sunday whatever it turns out to be i play dungeons and dragons with a bunch of my friends online this started during the pandemic because we couldn't get together to play DD, and i hadn't played D. i don't know it must have been well over a year or two even and that that that's kind of the norm for me i get way into it for a while and then um i get burnt out on it um Especially if I'm running a game. If I'm playing, it's not as big a deal. Especially if you're playing with a good group. And we're playing... The group I'm in right now is really good. Everybody is conscious of each other's questions and and, and allowing everybody to do what they do best in the game. And, and it's just fun when you have a group like that. I run OBS software so that I can run my green screen effects on the meeting. So when we're in... Uh, not Twitch. What the fuck is it? Discord. Like, I have a cool background. Yeah, I know. It's, it's kind of cheesy. But like... I really enjoy being in the moment, and I love role-playing. So, uh, you know, it might be a silly background, but it's going to have something to do with whatever we're doing in the game at the time. Nonetheless, I'm doing this again now. And uh, let me start by saying a, a huge thank you to Pat Mitchell. The other night, uh, Pat invited me to go take um, help document this, this mushroom he had found at uh, Camp Kumbaya. I don't know how much I can say about this because I don't know how backstabby the world of mycology is, but he is a, he would call himself an amateur mycologist, but any of us would call him a professional because we're like, whoa, that dude knows what he's talking about. Pat knows mushrooms. So um, he found this one. Um, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you what it, the whole story behind it, but, but I want to show you a few pictures here. Um, some of these mushrooms may just seem simple and normal, but when you throw them under a uh, ultraviolet light, they really uh, come alive. It's an amazing thing. It really is. Beautiful. Anywho, we went out there in the middle of the, well, not the middle of the night. We went out there about 8 o'clock when the sun had just about, just about setting, and we set up the cameras and got everything so that we could get some good pictures of this, this mushroom. Um, so he has these black lights. I shit you not. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. The forest comes alive. Like, you would be so surprised at the things that shed a bioluminescent, um, you know, ultraviolet color that it bounces back. And, and things are different. Like, take a look at this. This is my favorite photo out of all of them. It's not perfectly in focus, but there's something whimsical and magical and mythical about it. And look at where you're seeing reds. And look where you're seeing blues and and. In these crazy colors, none of that exists in in our spectrum of our eyes, our our natural you know spectrum. So of course this inspired me to go ahead and order two of my own <laughs> ultraviolet flashlights, and I think we'll be seeing a lot more uh, night photography happening. But I wanted to thank Pat not only for sitting down and talking with us the other night, but for getting me out of my comfort zone and getting me back out into the forest. Um, it's really where I love to be, and I haven't spent a lot of time there the last 10 years I've just gotten worse and worse where I want to go out less I don't want to be around people I would much rather be home and just either with my family or with technology like doing this or hanging out with them um, I don't know what it is that caused that but just the, the thought of going back out into the world and dealing with people on a daily basis makes my mind go crazy and, and I know not all people are bad people or anything like that it's just I don't know it it's a social anxiety disorder, I guess. I, I've never been diagnosed with anything, but clearly uh, I am in a stage in my life where I, I'm, I'm very anxious around people. Like, I don't want to do that. Does that make me a bad person? I don't think it makes me a bad person. I don't know. So July 1st is coming up in uh, two or three days here, and that signifies one thing here in Virginia. That is the legalization of marijuana. We can now possess, adults can possess up to one ounce, uh, and no one can say a goddamn thing about it. Um, 
this is long overdue, and I think it's about time that the federal government got their head out of their asses and legalized all drugs across the board, to be completely honest. And you might be saying, Jay, are you out of your mind? Heroin? Yeah, heroin. Heroin, cocaine, crack, you name it. Like, these are things that people get addicted to, but they shouldn't be criminal things. Like, why are we making something, why are we making a plant a criminal thing? You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy to me. Like, I understand that, you know, a lot of these harder drugs can can have a, a longer lasting effect. There's the addictive side of it. But the fact of the matter is, is we're treating them the wrong way. And I think that if we get rid of the whole well, first of all, if we legalize all drugs, then we don't have to worry. We can reallocate our police forces to not have to worry about stuff like that. The war on drugs may be well intended, but it falls fucking flat when you start to mention an overcrowded prison where a rapist gets paroled. To make room for a dude who has sold a pound of weed, to me that's a crime. Here's the good people doing time, y'all. That is 311 lyrics. You may or may not like 311, but I always, that line always stood out to me. I was like, wow, man, yeah. Do what thou will should be the whole of the law until you violate the rights of another. Respect the space of your sister and your brother. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a little bit of 311 and a little Alistair Crowley in there mixed in. Two combinations you never thought you'd be hearing out of my mouth this morning. Maybe you did. Maybe you're like, I wonder if Jay's going to quote 311 and Alistair Crowley today. Huh. Alistair Crowley was also the name of my friend Jeff Godick's uh, wizard in uh, my D&D campaign. One of the first ones I ever ran. Incredible character. Incredi incredible group. Um, some of the best role-playing I've ever seen in a game in my entire life. And I'll tell you a brief story about this, and I'll let you go. Actually, I'm going to leave you with a question at the end. Uh, it's something I read earlier uh, from, a, from a fan. You know, a fan sent this in, and um, I'll refer to them as their character names. But Alistair and Janix were friends. They were part of a party of heroes, the heroes of Athalia, who had... Um, you know, freed the people of Athalia under their this oppressive laws and 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 the tyranny of evil men. Um, and this went on for a few years. We played this game, but at one point, Jeff came to me. Uh, uh, o O C for a moment. Jeff came to me and 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 kind of told me about his plans for his character, and he wanted to become a god, and he was going to do anything in his power to do that. And if that meant stepping on the party and the party's needs he would do that. And so this party saw their friendship fall apart with, not Jeff, but with the character. And it got pretty intense at some times. And um, it got to the end. He had succeeded in every way possible. Alistair Crowley had finally made, I call him Alistair, and I dropped the Crowley. I call him the crow in my world because I don't want to use Alistair Crowley. So Alistair <laughs> he had one more challenge. He he made it through this graveyard of undead, just hundreds of undead, fine, outsmarting them, outwitting them without ever having to lift a finger or cast more than a spell. And he found himself in the presence of two gold dragons, two male adult gold dragons, and maybe one is a female, I don't remember. And I knew with his repertoire of spells and what I could do to him with those dragons, I would I would obliterate him. But I also knew that I liked Alistair and I didn't want to kill him and I wanted that story to continue. So what I did was I left it up to the fates and I allowed, um, I allowed my friends Rob and Pete, I believe it was, to role play the dragons. So the fight actually took place and I was not even a part of it. They rolled it out, they decided what they were going to do and in the end Alistair fell. But falling isn't forever in Athalia. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, he made his way back into my world. I know many of you probably care very little about that story, but some of you uh, might remember it well. So I talk to you guys like we're all best friends. So I assume that you were right there over my shoulder watching me play D&D &D when I was 16, 17 years old. You weren't. No, maybe you were. <laughs> maybe I just didn't see you. <laughs> I apologize. That was a rough period of life. No, it wasn't. That was smooth. That was smooth sailing. In hindsight, it's funny how, like, when you're young, you're like, man, oh, things are so tough. And then you grow up, and you're like, wow, that was a whiny little bitch. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave you this. This came from uh, uh, Jimmy Hasselback from uh, Coxville, Indiana. <laughs> um if you were guaranteed honest responses to any three questions, who would you question it and what would you ask? 
See, that's not really what I need to answer here. I mean, I could, but it, it's more of like a personal thing, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. You, honestly, off the top of my head, I have no idea who I would ask what to. But I think it's a good question to ponder. I think it's like, okay. And at the very end of that, when you get to that point, you know, why don't you ask yourself, why don't I ask these honest questions, see if I can get honest answers. And if I can't, then why am I not getting on? You know, it, it opens up doors to, to learning about yourself, I think, a little bit. And I hope I've helped you do that. If you're enjoying learning about yourself as much as I'm loving making these things, then you should consider liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, and hit the little bell icon. It'll let you know every time I put out a new video. Don't forget to make somebody smile today and take care of each other out there. I'm Jason Oliveira, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode of the Vodcast Podcast. Take care, and boy howdy. <laughs> Actually, hang on a second. I, I got a, um, a notification on a video. I'll put a thing up. Uh, I got a comment on a video that was six years old the other day. And I thought it was the craziest thing in the world. So I went out of my way because I don't want to like leave somebody hanging. And I answered it as best as I could. But I, I really wasn't sure exactly. Vetna, Velta? I can't remember the, uh, the individual's name. I apologize. But um, I'm not sure what code. I guess it was a Valhalla, a Brawlhalla code or something. I'm just going to cut this out. Okay, goodbye.